welcome back to the allotment. It's not even eight o'clock and it's already 23 degrees and I'm melting. We're having a bit of a mini heat wave here in the UK this week. So I thought I'd come down quickly as possible. As you might be able to hear, I have a bit of a bunged up nose. I have a cold. I always seem to have a cold when it gets very hot. So I will show you the list of things that I'm going to do this morning. Uh, there's quite a few things I want to, so anyway, I'll show you that in a minute. I went shopping yesterday and Waitrose has this weird thing where they put half their products outside and you don't see them until after you've paid for your things. So I came out with my trolley and I was waiting for my friend to come with the car and then I realised they had some plants. So I thought, I don't need anything. I bought far too much, uh, especially after last Friday, which I'll tell you about in a moment. But I thought these were quite cheap. £4 for 12 bulbs. Uh, so I thought I'd give them a go. Got some more alliums there. Eight. What's that? Eight bulbs for £6. Again, I think that's quite cheap. And I think I've told you before, I've gone overboard with my daffodils and my tulips. I've done a big spend, a few hundred pound, and I'm never going to buy a daffodil for at least another four years. That's what I'm saying to myself. Although I did say to myself, I wasn't going to buy any more seeds dur during 2024. And I think that's made my mind go a bit doolally and I can't stop spending. But anyway, seven bulbs for six pound. But just look at the colours on those daffodils there. I forgot the name of them then, daffodils. But I got seduced last Friday night and I'm going to tell you about it. Only 85p a packet, only for the next 24 hours. And I would usually delete these emails, but I fell for it and I've bought some seeds. But I've just come down on the bike, as you saw. It was a lovely hazy day this morning, so I know it's going to be a, a hot day. And two of my packets have got soaked by the plants that I brought down, which again, I'll show you when we go outside. So I need to put these into a pot and talking about seeds that's just reminded me in fact last week in last week's video I showed you some of my climbing French beans and a lot of people we came down to that it was either Cobra or Blue Lake so I've looked into it a bit more and I think it is possibly Blue Lake just to show you this these are my runner beans for next year. This variety is called Benchmaster, but because the packet has worn away, I will have to put them into a pot and deal with them later. Also, the peas. Terrine. Have you seen this, this pea before? Oh, look, it's falling all over the place. We've still got a few weeks left of summer, so we must enjoy it because it's not autumn yet until the equinox. As much as a lot of society are starting to uh, do away with these pagan celebrations, it is not autumn until the equinox, whatever the Met Office say. For those outside the UK, the Met Office is... Um, the Meteorological Society and they deemed a few years ago that summer was over on September the 1st but it's not as much as people try and change things you can't change nature right I will go through all the rest of the seeds as time goes on because there's quite a few of them that I want to sow today but now let's have a look what's on the whiteboard so this was last week's Ah, I'll have to check on the sweet peas because they might have come into flower. But some of the things I want to do today involve to sow seeds and pot up plants. These two there, I know they've been pushed on a week, but it's far too hot to do things like that today. Ah, look. Some of the sweet peas have come out in memory of Steve from Greenside Up. These were his favorite sweet pea variety and it's a pleasure to see them. And the scent, I can already 
smelled scent coming off them on the morning dew. Beautiful. Well done, Steve. Never be forgotten. Now, as much as it's nice to see the sweet peas, if you leave the flowers on, the plant will think it's done its job and will start to produce seed. So it is best to pick them. So every few days, come out, and if you see some flowers, they're in full bloom, pick them, take them indoors, put them in a vase, and then the plant will give you more flowers in the coming days. Just so a, a goose fly across the allotment. Yes, nothing better than a freshly picked bunch of sweet peas with a bit of dew on. Steve certainly knew about his sweet peas and the scent, even with a bit of a cold, it's beautiful. Now, if you're unsure about whether to harvest your pears, then there's a trick. You just take the pear and you lift it up and if it comes off, then it's ready. If you want to, you can press the top and that will slightly give and that is another indication that they are ready to pick as well. So I've picked it because if I didn't, then the wasp will get in and start to destroy it. But I can still uh, try it. Let's have a look. Very nice. Still a bit hard. But that could be the nature of this particular pear. But I like a hard pear. I don't like too much juice when you put your gnashes into a pear. I'll enjoy this, very refreshing. Now last week I briefly showed you this cranberry plant that arrived and I've got no experience doing cranberry plants but I do know that they need an ericaceous compost which is a bit different from your normal multi-purpose compost because the level of this is a bit more acidic than normal compost and certain plants such as cranberries and blueberries they prefer an acidic compost so put it into its own pot and control the environment i've actually seen somebody grow these in an old bath in an old tin bath so Get that compost in. It is nice and damp. It's just come out of the bag. Ericaceous compost is a bit more expensive than your normal multi-purpose compost. But there's no way of getting around it. You need this compost if you want to grow certain fruit. And to pot it on, it's as simple as anything else. Turn your pot upside down, give it a squeeze, Give it a tap, and there it is. Now, if your root system was very congested, you would tease them out like this. But this one is doing okay, so I'm just gonna pop it in. If you find there's a bit too many leaves and you can't get your hands in, what you could do is, is just put the pot into the hole, like, like that. Make a hole with the pot, pull it out, and then you just slot the plant into the hole, Give it another bit of compost around the top, firm it in, and give it a really good water in. And who knows, if everything goes according to plan, this time next year, we'll be picking our very own cranberries. So the other plant that I've bought, which needs ericaceous compost, is this blueberry beautiful plant. I don't think it should be uh, a standard but that's the one they seem to have sent me. A standard is a plant that has one central uh, stem with the plant on top but maybe it's just the way this one is growing. So again it needs ericaceous compost and I've got a rather large pot this time for it it's going to be in this pot for many years to come. You could put them into the garden, 
but you'd have to dig out a big enough hole in order to put the ericaceous compost in the soil. I think this might take the whole bag. Do you grow blueberries? Obviously I'd be putting a net over the top of them just in case the birds, you don't want to put all this time and energy and money into something in order to feed the birds who are doing this to put food into our own stomachs. As much as I do love to see a bird in the garden. So, because I don't want to be fussing around with all this in my face, I'm just going to take it out of the pot and use the pot to make a hole for it. You can, if you want to, leave the pot there and it doesn't matter if soil gets in it. When we take the pot out, we'll have a perfectly formed space to put the plant in. Right, we're going to have to lift this bag up and tip it all in, I think. You're reading a report, although sometimes when you're a gardener, you don't need science to tell you things. You just know it. I read a report that said that it's now scientifically proven that putting your hands into the soil can distress the body. Like I said, we already knew that. So I'm ready to take the pot out now. So we just give it a bit of a turn because we don't want the sides to cave in. And there we go. The perfect size for, for the blueberries. Pop it in like that, and then just cover it with a bit more soil. And before I leave today, I will give this at least two can loads of water. Give it a really good soak and pop it in full sun. It will certainly enjoy this new home. Certainly a beautiful day. I'll enjoy this even more when I'm indoors with a nice cup of tea. There you go, give this a really good water. Always give them a thorough good dosing when you first put something into a pot. So one of my spontaneous buys when I was shopping yesterday were these chrysanthemum. And the variety is Milkshake Mixed, which I thought was a very good name. Now these will go down to about minus 10. I don't think, well, saying that, last winter I think it did get down to about minus 15 at one point. So they will grow as big as the pot they go in. So I'm going to put them in, well I'm going to put one of them into this ceramic pot that I've got, a nice autumnal brown. Just pop it in, bunch the leaves up and then get your hands. This is just normal multi-purpose compost, nothing special. And these, if I look after them, will grow as big as the pot and the flowers will fall over the sides and put on a really dis really big display. Chrysanthemums to me always seem to represent the 1970s. I don't know why. I used to live next door to a world champion chrysanthemum grower, so maybe that's why. Right, I'll give that a good watering and place that in the sun. I couldn't find any more pots, so I thought I would try and put two into this trough. And I've picked the both of the same colour. So if it does work, then it'll create one big mass of flowers. I do love chrysanthemums. There we go. Right, see what happens in the coming weeks now. So there they are, all in their own little pots. And give them a good watering now. And it'll be a pleasure to see these colours in autumn. It certainly brighten up the garden.
Right, so the chrysanthemums are done. And I'm just going to pick a few beans. I'm very much looking forward to doing these Blue Lake again next year. Ah, seeds. Like I said, I've already bought a lot of seeds. I got seduced into one of these, buy them cheap in the next 24 hours sort of things. So I will take you inside because it's getting very hot. I think I've got sweat on top of sweat. Potter plants, done that. I don't think I'm going to sow my seeds today because it is getting far too hot in the shed. It's 30 degrees, 31 degrees, which is 87. 6 degrees Fahrenheit. It's hot. It's just tipped over into 31 degrees. So I don't think I will show you my seeds just yet. I'm going to head home and have a nice cool bath. So I'll catch up with you next time. <laughs>